Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to this episode of Fortnite here, which is Alan Wake Flashback. It's a mini game that was put together by a great team to kind of recap the events of the first Alan Wake game. And since Alan Wake 2 is coming out today, as of me uploading this video, I figured I would have this episode as a way to give you a recap in case you have not seen Alan Wake at all. And I encourage you, now that they've remastered it and everything, like, go pick it up. It's amazing. There's also a DLC out there that you can get called American Nightmare. I mean, get on PC as well. So please get it if you're a fan of things like Twin Peaks or anything creepy that Stephen King has written. Um, It's really awesome. It's great. It's like basically a love letter to those types of stories. And I can't wait to dive into the second one. We've been waiting 13 years. And in real time, Alan Wake, after the events of the first game, he's been missing for 13 years. So everyone's been looking for him. FBI, you know, different agencies have been looking for him. And at one point, the search was given up. But I figured, hey, well, Fortnite has some cool characters in it like Batman, Why not be the world's greatest detective and see if he can't try to find some clues and learn about where Alan Wake might be during this 13-year gap? So this is just a fictional thing I put together by playing through Fortnite. I'm not a big Fortnite guy. Um, I know Blue has since played the game. He made some friends online, and he's played the game. So I'll have some of that footage go up later where he played as Marvel characters and stuff and everything. I'm not much of a Fortnite guy, but it was cool to play through this because there's no real combat in it. It's mainly just you you know, using a flashlight, just like you do in the Alan Wake game, and trying to solve the mystery of where Alan has been. So without further ado, enjoy the episode and let me know what your thoughts are down below of this. And uh, and if you want a friend request blue and play them on Fortnite, (laughs) feel free to send them. Uh, Send us a friend request on Xbox. That's where we have it at Seek and Destroy. And uh, and then, yeah, if he's ever around, maybe he'll play a game with uh, with you guys. So he seems like he's pretty good at it for me, at least as a fan of Alan Wake. This was really cool. And I think there's Alan Wake skins coming to the game as well. Nothing I'm going to enjoy, probably, but it was cool to at least go and do this, this little flashback thing, and recap the events of the first game, so that way you guys are on page one with me when we start the first chapter of Alan Wake 2. In a horror story, the victim keeps asking why, but there can be no explanation, and there shouldn't be one. The unanswered mystery is what stays with us the longest, and it's what we'll remember in the end. My name is Alan Wake. I'm a writer, and 13 years ago, I found myself in a horror story of my own making. I used to live in New York City with my wife, Alice. I wrote crime novels starring a fictional detective named Alex Casey. They made me famous. But then I killed off Casey. Now you can't even talk to me? I need to write something different. Something new, but nothing works. I I can't take it. Alan, you've been working on this for over two years. You need a break. I heard about this peaceful little town. It'll be the perfect place to clear your head. So Alice convinced me to visit Bright Falls, a small, quiet town in Washington. Just what I needed. First we stopped at the local diner to get our cabin key from the landlord.
As soon as I stepped in the door, the waitress Rose recognized me. Said she was my biggest fan, had all my books. After she made me promise her an autograph, I asked about the landlord. Rose said he must have gone to the restroom. I checked the back of the diner. It was dark. Foreboding. The kind of place that made your skin itch. That's when Barbara Jagger appeared. An older woman in a vintage funeral gown, like something out of a 1960s horror novel. She said the landlord hadn't been able to make it, and handed me the cabin key. She insisted she'd come by later to check on us, and to meet Alice. Alice and I drove through the majestic landscape to our cabin. The little wooden house stood alone on a tiny island near the shore of Cauldron Lake, in the bowl of an impressive caldera. the directions right? Nothing like in the brochure. It said near the lake, not on it. It was a beautiful place. I told myself I could rest here, sleep here, forget about my work. I thought we could be happy here. Surprise! Alice, what, what is this? I guess I have a small confession to make. I thought maybe you could write here that a change of Damn it, Alice, get you passed. Everyone keeps. Hey, hey, hey! Just hear me out. There's a local doctor, Dr. Hartman. I read a book of his. He has a private clinic here. He specializes. So now you want to get artist. me committed? No, no, it's not like that. That's not. Alan. Don't! Just don't! I don't want to hear it!
When I came to, I was behind the wheel of a crash car on a forest road. I felt like I had woken up from one nightmare only to find myself in another. I remember diving in after Alice. So how was I here? The loose sheets of paper were pages from a manuscript entitled Departure. That was the name I'd planned to use for the next novel I'd never gotten started. I was named the author. I hadn't written it. I couldn't remember writing it. Departure by Alan Wake. The Taken stood before me. It was impossible to focus on it, as if it stood in a blind spot caused by a brain tumor or an eye disease. I was terrified. I squeezed the flashlight like my life depended on it, willing it to stop coming any closer. Suddenly something gave, and the light seemed to shine brighter. I found a page of writing, but it made no sense. A fragment of some demented horror story. At first, I kept finding the pages as if by accident. The book I couldn't remember was either a terrible and true prophecy or an act of creation that had rewritten the world. I began to hunt the pages, feverishly, for they held the answer to the mystery. I realized that the shadowy figure was the character from the page I just found, the Taken. A man taken over by a creature of supernatural darkness called the Dark Presence. Outside, there's only darkness. Outside the cabin, outside the story, there's only darkness. I can feel her presence in the dark. Just now, I could smell her perfume in the room. I'll reach her, I'll fix it up. I'll bring her back. The story will come true. If I stop, she's lost. I would come to realize the lake does something to works of art created here. It lifts the story from the page and gives it form. Turns fiction into terrible truth. The manuscript was becoming real.
I tried to hold on to Alice, but her form melted away. I was losing control. Dr. Hartman stood in her place. I wanted to hit him, but my arms were jelly. He smiled. It was a reassuring smile, and I hated him for it. You're a patient in my clinic. Have been for a while now. I found myself stuck in Cauldron Lake Lodge, Dr. Hartman's clinic. He tried to convince me I was a patient of his, that I had imagined everything. I knew he was lying. Soon enough, his true colors would be revealed. It's okay, Alan. Just let go. The pages I'd been carrying with me were gone. I needed them back. They were the key to finding Alice, to understanding this mystery. The dark presence followed the choreography laid out to it in the manuscript, growing stronger and stronger, moving like a storm from one scene of destruction to the next. When the story reached the end it longed for, it would finally be free. I broke into Hartman's office to learn the truth. The manuscript pages were on his desk, the ones I had found and more. I confronted him, furious. He admitted he had been lying and tried to cut a deal with me. He was still trying to manipulate me, to use my writing for his own ends and to make the dark presence stronger in doing so. Alice went missing. Her screams rang in the stillness of the night. I saw myself run toward the cabin, flashlight in my hand. I followed my past self. I was an out-of-body observer, a time traveler in a crazy dream. This was the beginning. The night Alice had disappeared. The mystery of what had happened during the missing week was about to reveal itself. Alice! Alice! 
in a dream, I found myself back at the cabin, just like the manuscript described. It felt like I was reliving a suppressed memory, a waking nightmare. This was my chance to find out what had happened to Alice. I remembered it all now. In the dark, I'd written for days, a week, almost a complete manuscript of a novel entitled Departure. Jagger had been my editor, whispering in my ear, making sure that the unfolding story would make her more and more powerful. I thought I was saving Alice. Yes. All right. I'll fix it. I'll bring her back. Under the influence of the Dark Presence, I'd written a horror story, and now my own words were tearing my world apart. It was using my story to grow stronger, to spread its darkness. But somehow some part of me had been aware enough to write my own escape into the story, a way back to Cauldron Lake, to Alice. The story I had written in the cabin had come true. Touched by the dark presence, I had written a horror story, but the end was still missing. The story was incomplete, and the last unfinished page of the manuscript still sat in the typewriter in the cabin study. If I could get back there, if I could read the page, then I could write my own ending to this story and save Alice. Jagger was waiting for me, but I wasn't afraid. I had light on my side. I was ready. I fought Jagger with the light, shattered the darkness inside her. She was gone, but this was a horror story, and the ending had not yet been written. There would be a price to pay. Oh. <laughs>
There's light and there's darkness, cause and effect. There's guilt and there's atonement. But the scales always need to balance. Everything has a price. Ellen! Alice was safe, but the balance had to be kept. I'd taken her place, a small price to pay. Now I was trapped here, in the dark place, outside reality. If I wanted to escape, I would have to start writing again. A new story. A sequel to Departure. My name is Alan Wake. I'm a writer. Turn by Alan Wake. The dark presence is out there. Uh, it's hunting me. Its spies are always watching. It's trying to catch me. I think it did more than once. It's stealing from me, stealing my identity. It wants to be me, replace me, twisted version of me. Scratch, Mr. Scratch. It's slithering into the story. Once it's in the story, I have to use it to keep the story true. It got in. I have to make the story darker now. But that gives it power. That's bad. I don't want that. But I have no choice. It's an arms race. All right, now keep it together. Damn it. I'll be the first one to cross the finish line.